And now for something completely different. Smoke medical weed every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. What's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. You can always contact me, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. You can ask me, whatever it's called nowadays, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, R-Y-A-N-H-O-P-P-E. And if you're old school, if you're traditional, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. And what do you think my Snapchat is, Ryan Hoppy Radio? If this is your first time listening to the show, hi. On this show, we talk about celebrity news, dating. We talk about love, sex, whatever we feel like talking about. And when we talk about celebrity news, I call it like I see it. Recently, I was speaking to one of my mentors who works in radio, and he was like, you got to create a podcast where you talk about a certain topic that you're into, and not everybody wants to hear about celebrity news. I didn't say this to the guy, but my response is, I want to do a show where I entertain the audience, where you're sitting in traffic and listening to Hoppy Hour makes the day-by-day grind go by. I have wanted to do radio since I was in first grade, and it's actually, to me, a little frightening how much I love radio and how much I love audio and podcasts that sound like radio. Like, a lot of other people will be like, oh, I have a huge interest in gardening And I love uh, watching racing cars and that. And I'm like, I like radio. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. I um, am really fascinated with this Gypsy Rose imbecile. Gypsy Rose had her mom killed because she had a bad upbringing. And Gypsy Rose was with this guy who helped her not necessarily get out of jail, but his name was Ryan. He was this big, goofy Peter Griffin-looking guy. (laughs) Freaking sweet. And uh, that was a terrible Peter Griffin impersonation. And they broke up at the end of March. And uh, now she's pregnant and is due to have the kid in January, so that's about nine months. So she probably cheated on her ex with this new guy. And... um. It is literally the movie Idiocracy that this imbecile is going to have kids. And there are people trying so hard to have kids. And then this woman just going to, you know, pop out a kid who is totally going to need to go to therapy when it's all said and done. Right now on Happy Hour, let's find out why pregnant Gypsy Rose is crying. <laughs> no! Happy Hot Topic! I just want to be... A good mother for my child. I want to be. If you want to be a good mother, you should have the kid adopted. I just want to be a good mother for my child. I want to be everything my mother wasn't. Gypsy Rose Bland. I don't really like that. Listen, she just said everything my mom wasn't. You had your mom killed. You know what I'm saying? Like she's going, oh, everything my mom wasn't. I'm not I'm not defending her mom because her mom did a lot of bad things to her. Look it up. But it's just like, you had your mom killed. That's kind of the thing that nobody wants to talk about with this girl. She went to prison for getting a woman killed. And now she's having a kid. I just want to be a good mother for my child. I want to be everything my mother wasn't. Gypsy Rose Blanchard getting emotional as she reflects on her childhood amid her pregnancy news. Gypsy and boyfriend Ken Urker looking happily in love in new photos announcing their future bundle of joy. I will say this. 
you look at the guy in the picture, and I know this is an audio podcast, but he kind of has to look in his eyes where he's like, oh, no, I should have wore a condom. Suddenly, it's not about you. It's not about anything. Else. She either is going to be the best mom ever or a terrible mom. There's no in between. Mm-hmm. Other than the tiny little life that's inside you. Yeah. And that you have to make sure that you protect, you love, you you take care of, and, and all of the things that I wished I could have had. I just don't know why it bothers me so much hearing her critique a woman that she had killed. You know what I mean? Everything I didn't have. You got the woman killed. When I was little. And now she's crying. It's really funny. When she was in court nine years ago, when she was like 22, and then when she first got out of jail, she wasn't as pretty, but man, somebody from like TLC must have hit her up and been like, look, we're going to make you look really attractive so you can be famous. Here I am getting emotional. I'm coming. Yeah, it happens. So there is Gypsy Rose crying, saying she doesn't want to be like her mom. So she's out there critiquing somebody that she had killed. And let's be honest here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. She has a bad past. Maybe she can overcome it. She deserves a second chance because that's what America's about. But when you have a sketchy past, you need to embrace it. And this is also from TMZ. Gypsy Rose Blanchard is ripping tourists for doing some sightseeing in Missouri. She's annoyed that folks keep stopping by the house that she and her ex-boyfriend slayed her mother, Dee Dee. She just went scorched earth in the comments of a TikTok video showing a couple driving by the old house. She says, y'all have no respect or decency. A tragedy happened in the ha house, yet y'all visit it as if it was the Grand Canyon. Yes, people are into murder, and this just in. That didn't have to happen. You didn't have to have your mom killed. You're not the victim in this situation. Unfortunately, no matter how manipulative and how evil your mom is, your mom's the victim because you had her killed. So when you're saying a tragedy happened, the tragedy happened because of you. What are you talking about? I know I'm literally talking about a sociopath, so there's no common sense, but this woman's having a kid, someone who's getting mad about something that pretty much made her famous. If it wasn't for her having her mom killed, she wouldn't be famous. You got to embrace it. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? If somebody else, like let's say it was Mama June that gets killed, and Honey Boo Boo and the daughter uh, that I don't know her name, I think it's June, if one of those kids saw and found out that Honey Boo Boo's mom died, let's say Mama June dies, and all of a sudden people are visiting the house and they had nothing to do with her dying, then you could say, hey, Something bad happened there. But you have Gypsy Rose saying, a tragedy happened there. The tragedy happened because of you. That's what made you famous. Embrace it. You're a sociopath. It's just sad because I know a lot of people that wanted to have kids over the years and they couldn't. It literally is the movie Idiocracy. I remember when I saw Idiocracy in 2009, I had just had back surgery for my scoliosis, and I loved Mike Judge for Beavis and Butthead, the short-lived show, The Good Family, which was a funny show, uh, obviously King of the Hill, Office Space. And when I saw Idiocracy, I thought, oh, man, this is going to be a 1,000 years in the future. And 15 years later, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, we are living idiocracy. All right, here's the deal. We are going to be right back on Happy Hour. If you want to contact me, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. I record this show for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the UK and you drive on the right side of the car or if you live in the US and you drive on the left side of the car. I picture this show as a way for life to go by and to be entertained. 
We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Hang on. We'll be right back. Okay. On this show, I uh, construct it and I design it to be like a morning radio show in a podcasting format. Mm -hmm. So on this show, I play unlicensed music. I play throwbacks. I play songs that make your head bop. So here's the deal. If you're not into old school hip hop music and you just want to hear the talking, I say this before every segment, before every song, because you literally have to act like people are listening for the first time, even if you're listening 35 minutes in. If you don't want to listen to the song, you can skip forward five and a half minutes. But this song, You're Welcome by Jay Z, is a bop. Turn, turn me up a little bit. When that music World. comes in, it gets loud. loud. The hour will be right back. Swizzy. Yes. This is a You Heard That News World premiere. On roids. I've been hitting so long and I'm a big headed boy. Nah, we ain't on HGH, though I might pick up some weight when I'm running through your state. Nah, 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 we ain't on the clear, we on the runway, you back to back legs. Dismiss no more drama and Barack Obama, Rama's feel honest. I put my life on these tracks, you act like y'all wanna see me, but where do you get this? Luckily, my therapy is the I just bear my soul, I don't expect nothing back You all welcome, long as you felt I was gon' get my, you know where the hell I'm from I'm from the bottom, so I do this from the diapers Quick, fast, turn the big apple into cider I do this, I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do this for the lifers I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do it for the lifers You welcome see again Uh-oh. somebody so deadly be of the pen no, leave a whole veto how they know when we be in uh, pick up the biggie and uh, pack i do it for them uh, until i reach Kali, i do it for him do it for those who can't do for self due to the pen uh, may these bars reach through your bar and mine when mary sing it heals your heart god solely stands filled you are love is a battlefield we all get scars uh, i put my heart this is much more than marketed music. The reason I got a market to do this is people going through pain. I'm just walking. Damn, Loki, where the hell you find this one? This ain't no marketed music. People going through pain. I'm just talking them to it. Move up. Fish and I let other niggas feed you. For all of y'all keeping y'all in hell, just to 
segment good night. good night good night this following segment has been brought to you by dz Beezy honey.com when i tell you that it's the best delta 8 and cbd around mm-hmm. i'm a man of my words go to dz honey.com there you can get sticks of honey Lollipops, like a lollipop. Or you can get a jar of honey. Get high, sink on the couch in your Delta 8 and CBD. Watch some uh, Netflix, whatever you're watching. But for that to happen, you got to go to dzbzhoney.com and at checkout, use keyword happy. Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. And I'm on Snapchat at Ryan Hoppy Radio and Threads, Ryan Hoppy Radio, even though no one uses Threads. Some people do, but not me. I see this headline here, and this headline's fascinating. Extreme heat continues across the U.S. Mm -hmm. Every summer, you are destined for national news to tell you that it's hot out, like you didn't already know. All right, turning now to the high temperatures that are battering Americans from coast to coast. Mm. Millions of people are under excessive heat warnings and heat advisories as temperatures linger in the triple digits inside. Here's the thing. I'm from Chicago, and I used to have to wait at the bus stop in the suburbs. Uh, Not at like a city bus stop, but my dad made me wait in my neighborhood to teach me discipline, and it was negative five out. So even when it's the hottest it's ever been, I prefer that over being cold. Mm Mm-hmm some areas let's go cbs news correspondent carter evans who's joining me now from the california coast so carter how are residents there dealing with the heat you were in vegas yesterday you're back home Mm. on home's turf but it's still hot yeah it's still hot and, and it's still hot in many parts of los angeles although much cooler than Las Vegas, which has been breaking records for the last few days. Triple digits. Uh, they broke an all-time record, 120 degrees. Yeah. Now, you're getting triple digit temperatures in the inland areas of Southern California. Uh, the problem is uh, a lot of people want to come to the coast to cool off, and it's going to be in the 80s here today. That's great. Here's the thing. It says Pacific Northwest is seeing heat advisories. That's when you know it's hot out, is when Seattle and Portland make it hot. And that probably makes those cities full of zombies act up even more. And you can get in the water right here. You can see surfers behind me. But further down the beach towards Santa Monica, the water is off limits right now because it's filled with bacteria that comes from runoff from the streams. And that's the case for many beaches all the way down to San Diego. So people coming down to the coast to beat the heat today Uh may not be able to get into the water. 
Yeah, I have a pool. Uh, we'll move on from this headline because it's three more minutes about hot weather. There's a pool in my apartment. It's a community pool, and um, I swim laps, and I've done it the last two months to lose weight, and I look really good. And uh, the thing is, it's not really um, temperatured. So, like, if it's cold out and I'm swimming in December, it's absolutely freezing. But if it's hot out during the summer, it's hot. And um, I'll tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that I hope to someday upgrade to having a pool that it's temperature controlled. Because during the winter, now granted, when you say winter in Florida, it's mainly 50 degrees. But when it's cold in the water, you are shivering. But the feeling after you swim Mm -hmm. is amazing. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody's into taking Ozempic to lose weight. Everybody's into taking the other med. I forget the name of it, but the main one's Ozempic. I have gone through weight gain and weight loss my whole life. When I was 18 years old, I cried and weeped on my bed because I had to take a graduation picture. And I could not fit into my black pants. So my mom got me a membership at the gym, LA Fitness, that is now eSport Up. And I got a trainer whose name was Nick. And we keep in touch. And I lost weight. And then through my 20s, I would drink. Then I would lose weight. Because when I would drink a lot, I would gain weight. And then I went into two relationships and got a relationship fat. And then I lost weight. And then I worked a 9 to 5 job producing conservative radio where I was sitting in a chair for 9 hours. So I gained weight over the last 8 months. And now I'm losing weight again. And now, granted, for the older listeners, they're going to laugh when you say, oh, you're 30 years old. You're not old. But I feel old compared to the fact that 9 years ago flew by and I feel like I was just 21. And I did notice that I have to work harder to lose weight. Like, when I was 21 years old, I would notice my face would get all skinny three days later. But uh, now it took about two months. But it feels like the results will stick. And the other thing I noticed, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is there's something so much more fulfilling about just counting your calories using your MyFitnessPal app. And there's something really fun about working out and listening to your favorite music and podcast. It gives you energy. I'm not saying the people that are taking Ozempic don't need to take it or that they're not working out, but there's something so fun about earning it the easy way. Now, one of my friends took it because she needs to take it and she looks great, but it's like not everybody needs to be on Ozempic. And some of these people, I swear, they look so weird when they're so skinny. I have this listener I don't want to say what listener it is because they might be listening. So I maybe shouldn't even say it, but I'll say it. The person used to be overweight. I don't know for sure that the person took Ozempic, but I saw recent pictures. I've never met this person, but they've been a listener forever. And I was like, wow, you look different. Not in a good or bad way, but just it's crazy how one shot of Ozempic and you take it or however you take it, how often you take it, how it can, can just completely morph a person. You look at people like Adele, I think she used it, or maybe it was Natural Weight Loss, or Billy Gardell from Mike and Molly. It's always weird when somebody who's perennially overweight and always overweight, when they lose weight like that, and you're like, wow, you're a completely different person. You do need to applaud it, but you can't deny and say that it's not different. Mm -hmm. George Stephanopoulos says that Joe Biden can't serve four more years. He tells TMZ, earlier today, I responded to a question from a passerby. I shouldn't have. George expressed his own point of uh, view and not the position of ABC News. So I guess he was walking and said that Joe Biden should not serve another term. And then uh, ABC News is panicking. They're like, no, no. Actually, that was the wrong sound effect. They're like, no, somebody went against our guy. No, no. Is the media that whipped by Joe Biden, the liberal media, that you're afraid to critique that dementia patient? And then you have George Clooney out here saying, oh, yeah, he can't serve, even though you helped him earn $32 million about three weeks ago. 
I'm not voting, so I don't lean on the right or left. But the liberal rich and elite are such phonies. Now, a lot of the right-wingers drive me nuts, too. But that typical rich and elite that doesn't know how much inflation has affected them because they have enough money that it doesn't affect them, they are the worst. George Clooney, George Stephanopoulos, any liberal people with the name George... Your opinion is no different than anybody else. And the fact that ABC News panicked just shows how whipped the media is. And yes, I just said that. I just said to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that I'm not voting. That drives a lot of people nuts when I say that. They go, oh, well, you're a part of the problem. I'm not voting for Biden because he's a brain-dead dementia patient that creeps me out and has a loser son, which says a lot about him as a man. And I'm not a Trump guy. Sorry. Haven't voted since 2012 for Obama. Not going to have me voting for people that don't know who I am and don't care about this country and are only, uh, you know, going into the election for a power trip. Ugh, drives me nuts. Drives me out of this world. That's as political as we're going to get today. So we're going to move on. You can always call me. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. I record this show for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you're on the right or the left. I will call out everybody that's rich and elite and out of touch. That's what I do here on Hoppy Hour. 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. Coming up next, we have a ton of celebrity news. And we might even talk about dating. But if you are listening on the right side of the car in the UK or on the left side in the US, either way, wherever you are, I appreciate you listening to my voice. We'll be right back. Ryan Happy Radio dot com. Happy Hour will be right back. Mm-hmm. You know the drill, but I gotta say it again. If you don't feel like listening to this song, you can skip forward three and a half minutes. But here is King Louie and Boss Woo. Money dance. If you need to beat it up together. Hot body alert. Hot body alert. Man up, man up, alert. alert. Them drillers is out. Is out, is out. We drilling. Do the money walk. Throw a stack of two. For a stack of two. Be a whack of crew. Yeah, no, I don't like that word. Loud, only anti me. I don't like that herb. When with your wife, she dirt. She jockey, call a jockey. I'm a sinner home. With a breath smelling cocky. I'm arrogant. You yeah. ain't high body, I need some artwork I'ma call Cardi, get away driver I'ma call Cardi, Mac a legal sorry Damn so many on me, all my niggas real They PlayStation Sony, in other words they phony So many mini me's, when that I start cloning Do the money dance, I'm full but I'm hungry I'm Louis three times, like Tony, Tony, Tony Weapon off safety, I know Oh, I'm safe, it's on me. I got some new fans. Shout out who put them on me. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do a couple bands. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do a couple bands. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do a couple bands. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Do the money fast. Uh, I'm getting that money walk. Jay Z pimpin' did it, vision. Shoot the 50, bad. I hit no training wheels. Them headers rollin'. Ain't no time for block to block. Shoot up crib, snatch up kids. You niggas scared. Niggas gon' walk it out. I play to win. 
ain't no loss, it's stupid. My circle closed, we get money, they look funny. Fuck your life and your wife, the folks to be wildin' out. Stupid bands, wipe them out. Juice style be my money, dance, dress, swing, legs, spin. I love my city, shot racks. But we heat them up. D Way's back. Shout out to Big Bro Zach Mac. Duck the case, fuck the Jakes. Let's go, let's go. Play it. Play Fuck the Jakes, play no games, poker face, anti-me at custom face, lean got me sleeping now, but I'm wide awake, hit the loud, no eyes with pump, King go stupid, I go clueless, money dance, ain't no juking, cool ass nigga, shove and push em. we real groovy, you lames losing. Yo, the money dance, shoot em, yo, the money dance, yo, yo, the money dance, yo, yo, a couple bands, yo, the money dance, shoot em, yo, the money Yo, the money dance, shoot em, yo, the money dance, yo, yo, the money dance, shoot em, yo, the couple bands. Yo, the money dance, shoot em, yo, the money dance, yo, yo, the money dance, shoot em, yo, a couple bands. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. This following segment has been brought to you by Mitra 9. M-I-T-R-A-9.com. The best cabin kratom around. At checkout, use keyword Hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, to save 20% on the best kava and kratom around. Are you looking for that alternative to drinking? Are you looking to get sober while getting your buzz on? I'm a man of my words when I tell you that Kava and Kratom has changed my life. But you got to go to mitra-9.com, M-I-T-R-A-9.com. And like I said, you got to use the keyword hoppy. Sounds good? Get it? Got it? Good. Tweet Ryan Hoppy at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Snapchat him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And email him anytime at Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Happy hour. Happy hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the other stations are tuned in too. Eight five six forty nine hoppy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me. You can ask me at Ryan Happy Radio. You can always email me Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. We have so much to get into. So let's get into it. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Wedding bells are ringing for Olivia Munn and John Mulaney. I can't stand John Mulaney. Whoa, breaking news. Ryan Hoppy doesn't like a creepy rich and elitist? No. I find him to be repulsive. I find his really attractive Yo, The girls that listen to John Mulaney and that go to his shows and are into him think that they can fix him. That, hey, I'm going to be the one that will make everything okay. And that's what's going on with Olivia Munn. E! News can confirm the actress and comedian who shared two-year-old son of Malcolm together have officially tied the knot. Mm. Her people, the couple recently got married in a simple, intimate ceremony at a friend. How long until this wedding or this marriage fails? Here's why. This relationship allegedly began on cheating. Mm-hmm. And any relationship, Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen, that begins on cheating ends in cheating she was the alleged side chick we don't have a hundred percent proof it's pretty much there so how long until one of them gets bored with each other and uh cheats 
friend's home in New York State with her little boy Malcolm right by their side. Fuck Olivia you. and John have been romantically linked since May of 2021. And just a few months later, John opened up to his fellow SNL alum, Seth Meyers, during an episode of Late Night that he and Olivia were expecting a baby together. Before I play this clip, I don't know who would be more pretentious to be around. John Mulaney or Seth Meyers. They are both insufferable. I got into this relationship that's been really beautiful mm. and um, with someone incredible who has like, you know, dealt with the non-coked up Bambi version of me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been very incredible. I bet he is insufferable and so annoying on cocaine. Like most people on cocaine. And she's kind of held my hand through that hell. Mm. Um, and we're having a baby together. That kid's either going to be really pretentious or very likable. Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations. Both. It was, I was nervous when I was about to say the news. <laughs> That's why I looked down and then I looked up. All right. Enough of John Mulaney. I can't stand him. Maybe it's because my last two girlfriends thought he was so funny. He just seems like a repulsive human being. You don't look at John Mulaney and you go, oh, that's a good guy. That's someone you want to be friends with. John Mulaney. 856-49-HOPPY. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! This next headline is interesting. You said a receiver is a quarterback's best friend and as a Hall of Fame quarterback, um, talk to me about telling their sides of the story this time around. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure I understand, I'm not sure everybody else understands how hard it is to play receiver. How hard they have to work, uh, physically, mentally, how much. I don't think anybody's ever gone, oh yeah, being a wide receiver is real easy. Film they have to study, just as much film as a quarterback. Uh, how tough they have to be going across the middle, taking big hits, getting right back up. Uh, how patient they have to be, right? The ball can't come to them every single time, mm -hmm. but they better run their route every single play as if the ball's coming to them. So, look, I'm a big fan of receivers, and I think th the viewers will finally get to understand just what it's like to play receiver tight end in the NFL. Right, opening ceremony is two weeks away. Talk to me about who do you think is going to perform? Who do you want to perform? It's just going to be so exciting uh, just to, to witness the whole thing, right? Athletes on boats going down the River Sin, getting dropped off at the Eiffel Tower, just to just to be a, a witness to the whole experience. Peyton Manning is hands down one of the classiest dudes ever. I preferred him in the 2010s and 2000s over Tom Brady because he didn't, didn't win as much, and he played in Indianapolis, and I grew up in Chicago, and I kind of adopted them because the Bears are terrible experience but i don't know i mean you know i don't know i have no insight i, I am low on the totem pole yeah. but it's going to be some great music it's going to be some great performances obviously the heroes are going to be the athletes right coming down getting ready to compete in the olympics but i'm excited to be a part of it and you told us you're bringing your mom bringing my mom bringing my wife my kids my mother-in-law mm -hmm. so we got a good family going over there and uh gonna have some time in paris i wonder if he's either a really loyal husband that doesn't cheat or if he's a dog. Ruff, ruff. To do some different things, but obviously really looking forward to the opening ceremony. It's gonna be pretty magical. So Are you gonna introduce her to Snoop Dogg? She's met Snoop Dogg, actually. Yeah. Snoop, you know, he's on record saying he wants to be part of the Manning family. He wants my dad and mom to adopt him as the f He always does. Snoop Dogg's a cool dude, kind of got a sketchy past like most rappers, but he's one of those dudes that everybody likes. Martha Stewart likes him. Peyton Manning likes him fourth Manning so uh, we'll see there's still time maybe we'll get that done in Paris that'd be a good time to do it all right Peyton Manning I saw this here they're making a Shrek 5 Whoa! Happy hot topic! I love Shrek Shrek 5 is officially a go oh really you and what army Mm. According to a July 9th press release from DreamWorks Animation and Universal Pictures, Shrek 5 is happening. This is not I always loved DreamWorks films over Pixar. A little edgier. Not a drill. Are you talking to me? Whoa! Shrek 2, I remember seeing it in my in the theater with my uncle. It was so funny. It was so edgy for 2004. Can you believe that was almost 21 years ago? 
I was talking to you. While plot details are still under wraps, the original trio will return, with Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, and Cameron Diaz reprising their roles as Shrek, Donkey, and Princess Fiona. Mm. The original 2001 film followed Shrek as he set out on a quest with his noble steed, Donkey, to rescue Princess Fiona from a tower guarded by a dragon. But the fairy tale took a turn when it was revealed that Fiona herself turned into an ogre after dark and appeared. Oh, that's cool. We know how that went. Um, I'm getting a spam caller. Let's see if we can do this. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, you're on the radio. Hi, you're on the radio. What's happening? Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? This is Happy Hour. You're calling me. You're spam calling me. All right, man. I love whenever I get a spam call. Mm -hmm. I love saying, hi, you're on the air. <laughs> They can literally ruin my day by spam calling me. I'll freak them out. I like to do this thing on the show. I don't know if you noticed. I say, mm-hmm. It's my catchphrase. And one time I had a mm-hmm competition with this person. It sounded like she's from India. I answer and she goes, hello? And I go, mm-hmm. And it went over and over again. It was my greatest accomplishment in life. Mm-hmm. 856-49 Hoppy. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Now, do you think it's necessary that they're making another Shrek movie? Or would you prefer they come up with something creative? What do you think of John Mulaney? Am I being a little too harsh on him? Or do you think he's insufferable like I think he is? For, all right, I just had a brain fart. Here's the deal. You can go to RyanHoppyRadio.com for all the info on this award-winning show. I record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care where you live. Just listen. We will be right back on Happy Hour. After this, hang on. It's time for Happy in the morning. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com Happy Hour will be right back. <sighs> I hate the people that have to spam call you. Can you imagine doing that as a job? You're a loser. 856-49-HOPPY. 856-494-6773. You tweet at me? At Ryan Happy Radio. And you can always email me. RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. Now, here's the deal. I say it before each and every song. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward four and a half minutes. But I'm in the mood right now because I smoked a few doobies before this show. I'm in the mood to get a little trippy. Here is Kid Cudi and Rich Hill with Trippy. This song is four minutes and 26 seconds. But please experience the show with me and listen along. Oh, geez. My microphone's acting up. Maybe that's a sign that I should go to a break.
following segment been brought to you by fortify.com f-o-r-t-i-f-e-y-e.com for the best pre and post workout around mm-hmm. here's the deal use keyword ryan20 r-y-a-n-20 to save 20 percent brought to you by dr michael lang of the nationally syndicated ask the doctor radio show all right we're gonna come back on happy hour and talk about much more call hoppy now 856-49-HOPPY tweet at him at ryan hoppy radio happy hour happy hour across the world and heard exclusively on every podcasting platform by searching Hoppy Radio. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856 856- Four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Another House Democrat calls for Biden to drop out of the race. Funny how two months ago everybody was like, "Yo, Biden's the man." All the Democrats were. How funny and how quickly people turn. <laughs> I find this next headline fascinating. It says here, Virginia Governor Youngkin, sounds like a rapper's name, signs order to ban cell phones in school. 
The state of Virginia is cracking down on students using cell phones in public schools with a half million dollar initiative. So citing a teen mental health crisis, Governor Glenn Youngkin has issued an executive order to establish cell phone free education. The new rules would include the use of uh, dedicated cell phone pouches and lockers. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm not the biggest fan of this because there's an epidemic in America of a lot of school shootings, and I don't want to manifest it, but I'm saying the thing I liked about it was they were able to either film footage or call to get help. Mm-hmm. It's a very touchy subject, which is why I got a vasectomy. I don't want kids. And has issued an executive order to establish cell phone free education. The new rules would include the use of uh, dedicated cell phone pouches and lockers to restrict access. Virginia, by the way, the latest in a string of states to legislate restrictions on phones and classrooms. The others uh, include Florida and Indiana. Man, I swear, and I'm not trying to sound like an elitist because I got a vasectomy and don't want kids. But there is really no reason if you don't want to have kids to not get a vasectomy because you can get a reverse. Now, when I got my vasectomy two years ago, 23 months ago to be exact, uh, people were like, oh, well, what if you want kids? And it's not covered by insurance to get the vasectomy reversed because I paid only $5 with my copay for the vasectomy. And it was a legit thing. Whenever I tell people that, they're like, are you sure it wasn't just the back of someone's van? <laughs> no. Here's the deal, though. If I can't afford 2000 to get the vasectomy reversed, I probably can't afford kids. <laughs> just being honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery. Mm-hmm. Bachelor, bachelorette star Josh Cedar opens up about the storm of hate she's received since coming out as transgender and reveals it's coming mainly from the left. She was the reality star turned mental health blogger, which was caught in a social media storm last summer when her Instagram account was hacked and her death was falsely announced. Now Bachelorette alumna, alumnus Josh Cedar is weathering a new storm after coming out as transgender in May. She has endured a storm of bigotry with some questioning whether she's truly transitioning while others lambast her for choosing to keep her facial hair. Listen, I'm not going to even read any more of the headline. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, I say this during each and every show, and frankly, I'm going to say it again. Uh -huh. As long as someone is not hurting animals sexually, hurting kids sexually, or forcing themselves onto other adults without consent, I don't give a rat's butt what you do in the bedroom or what you do with your body. If you feel like you need to identify as a unicorn or a green alien, go right ahead. If you need to identify as transgender, or you need to identify as a potted plant. You know what? In this short lifetime, go for it. And the people that are truly hateful towards it, there's a difference between not getting it and kind of being confused by it, or the people that are totally hateful towards it. The people that are totally hateful towards transgender people are people that used to be bullies on the playground, and they like to judge others for being different. And now, people that have listened to my show know that I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in God. I don't think, because I lost my dad and my uncle both to leukemia, my dad in 2014 and my uncle three, four months ago. I don't believe that they're in some grand place hanging out with Abraham Lincoln and Marilyn Monroe and Marcus Aurelius. I, and I say that a lot, and people freak out when I say that, but I'm like, I don't think they're in some place hanging out. But if they are. And there's some grand God up there. I don't think he cares what people identify as. I think he cares about who the person is and what they are like to other people. Mm -hmm. It is just so nauseating. I love going on Twitter. And um, I know Twitter can have a lot of fake news. But as long as you fact check it, the news can be real. And I view Twitter like a newspaper. But ever since... 
Elon Musk took over Twitter. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it has just become a hateful place. It has become a place I don't want to go to. It has become a place that I just go to to promote my podcast and I get sucked in. 856-49-HOPPY. Nicki Minaj fans demand refund for disgraceful Dublin concert after she was 90 minutes late, which is normal for every rapper. (laughs) Performed for less than an hour and had multiple costume changes. Now, this is a millennial slash zillennial speaking because I was born in 93 and I'm really good with knowing uh, different uh, demographics and different uh, generations. So 93 to 97 is a, z- z- is a zillennial because they can relate to Gen Z. So I'm a fan of Nicki Minaj. I like her body of work and a lot of her songs from back in the day. But she has this I'm too cool for the room attitude and is probably jealous that Nicki Minaj took her act even though Nicki Minaj, or I mean uh, Cardi B took Nicki Minaj's act, but Nicki Minaj took uh, Lil' Kim's act to be the over-sexual female rapper. And Nicki Minaj should be bowing down to all her fans that paid to see her in concert. This is not 2010 anymore. You're not irrelevant. I'm sure you get millions of listens per month on Spotify. But nobody really talks about you anymore. You're married to a felon. You're awful to be around. And you're putting on a disgraceful show. Again, the 90 minutes late thing happens at every hip-hop show. I've seen Lil Wayne two or three times, and he's always late. That's normal. But to do a short show, that's sad. You should be applauding anybody that went to see you. You should be grateful. You should be so happy. Mm-hmm. 856-49 Happy. It's 856 856- Four nine four six seven seven three. Coming up next, we have a lot, and I mean a lot, of celebrity news to get into. This is a circus. Mm-hmm. You never know where I'm going to take this show. Hey, that rhymed. I could be talking about celebrity news or the fact that I got a vasectomy. <laughs> This music means it's time to go to break, though. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. I record this show for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the UK. I don't care if you live in the U.S. As long as you're listening to my show, that's all that matters. RyanHoppyRadio.com for all the info. And if you want to listen to more of Hoppy Hour and you're listening on the radio, search H-O-P-P-E on all podcasting platforms. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Do not touch that radio dial, that smart device. However the hell you are listening to Hoppy Hour. We'll be right back. Hang on. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ryan Happy Radio dot com. Happy hour will be right back. All righty. If you don't feel, I have to say this before every song. I just have to. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward, I would say, four and a half minutes. But here's Young Bino with Money Snap. <laughs> Yeah, that's 
Turn and did the money snap. Went to the car dealership and spent the hundred stacks. Bought me a Benz and a spaceship Cadillac. Put 50 in my mouth so I can shine when I battle rap. You boys don't know me. I'm from the show me. Pull that 45, leave your brains all holy. I made this one for the people who just don't dance. Too busy drinking liquor, politicking with their mans. Or them chicks with them six cents. One of my favorite radio shows of all time, the T-Man show with Rob Tepper, has not been on in 15 years. He used to do that, and I listened to him in 2008 when I was in San Francisco. And uh, he used to go, mm-hmm. So that is an homage to him. Mm-hmm. This following segment has been brought to you by Amir, Academy of Martial Arts. At AmirAcademy.com. When I tell you that he is the best MMA trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction, especially when it comes to your physical health. Here's the deal. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you go to AmirAcademy.com, there you can get the best MMA trainer, female self-defense classes, kids classes, boxing bags, a workout room, whatever the hell you need. He's in St. Pete. 
And when you go there, tell him that you heard about it on Happy Hour, and he will hook you up. Ryan Hoppe has a lot of stuff in common with Wilt Chamberlain. They both love women, they both are very tall, but actually never mind. Wilt was really coordinated, and Ryan Hoppe is it. Welcome back to Hoppe Hour. I love doing those AI voiceovers. <laughs> it kind of adds to the show. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. <laughs> And now for something completely different. Oh, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. 856-49-HAPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. At Ryan Happy Radio. You can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. And for all the info on this award winning show, hey, that rhyme. Ryan Hoppy Radio.com. R Y A N H O P P E. Radio.com. And if you're old school, it's www. I'm just kidding. No! Happy Hot Topic! It seems Ellen DeGeneres is ready to leave the public eye for good. Bye. See you later. <laughs> I never liked her. She used to be on when I came home from elementary school through high school. And my mom would watch her, and I knew she was so fake. She just seemed so insufferable. I didn't believe it. There was nothing about her where I looked at Ellen DeGeneres, and I go, that's that's a really good person, that Ellen DeGeneres. The comedian and former talk show host reportedly indicated her plans to step away from fame telling the crowd in a Q&A after a recent set on her Ellen's last stand-up tour in Santa Rosa, California that She's too much of a narcissist. She's going nowhere. She'll be back in six months. Like, hi, I'm back. She's quitting Hollywood altogether. According to SFGate, Ellen didn't mince words when a fan asked if she has her sights set on Broadway or more movies in the future, saying, quote, Um, no. This is the last time you're going to see me. After my Netflix special, I'm done. Here's why I don't believe it. She's a narcissist and probably a sociopath. She treated everybody badly. As much as I love Howard Stern and I love the shows that he influenced, Man Cow and Opie and Anthony, I love the quote-unquote shock jock format. She is a female Howard Stern. They treat their crew badly. And she knows that. And she's too much of a narcissist to go away. You really think... That she's just going to sit there with Portia de Rossi. I mean, I would too if I were her. Portia's beautiful. But I'm telling you, I love her in Arrested Development. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, she's too much of a narcissist to go away. In her mega mansion, you think she's just going to sit there in the void? Let me see how old Ellen is. You think she's just going to sit there? Let's say, uh, let me look up. Ellen DeGeneres age. 66 years old. So let's say she lives to 100. You think for the next 34 years... She's a millionaire times 500. You think she's just going to never be heard from again? You think she's just going to be able to sit there with her $370 million making her the 12th highest paid entertainer in the world when it was 2020? I just Googled it. Do you really think she's just never going to want to perform again? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> The 66-year-old reportedly doubled down on her comments when another attendee suggested she reprise her voice work as fan favorite Pixar character Dory, adding, Nope, I'm going bye-bye, remember? I do forget she was in the movie uh, Finding Nemo and Finding Dory as Dory. That is a good movie. I love Finding Nemo. Ellen's latest remarks come as she's been speaking out on tour about the fallout from multiple allegations of a toxic workplace environment. Yeah. Everyone knew it. They just kind of were afraid to say it because that was the 2000s and 90s where everybody was awful to each other. Mm -hmm. And then that word, um, what is it? Karma came around. At her daytime show prior to its 2022 end, 
The Emmy winner previously apologized on air to those who were affected, saying at the time that she was in, quote, a position of privilege and power and takes full responsibility for what happens on her show. She only feels bad because she got caught. Now, if she were to have had a revelation, maybe she does ayahuasca with Aaron Rodgers or does shrooms and realizes that she's a terrible person and goes on TV and goes, hey, guys, I'm sorry. Treated everybody badly. It's my fault, blah, blah, blah. Then I would believe it. But she only, and I mean she only is sorry because she got caught. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Steve Harvey when he got caught. During her latest round of stand-up concerts, Ellen reportedly joked that she was kicked out of show business for being mean, adding at her Santa Rosa set, her SF gate, that she, quote, can be demanding and impatient and tough, adding, I am a strong woman. I am many things, but I am not mean. If you're not mean, why were you making everybody on your team cry? Mm -hmm. A lot of times people that are mean, people that are not good to be around are unaware because they're such sociopaths. I've worked in it in radio. They're such sociopaths that they don't even know what they're doing to other people. A lot of times it's when the billing and the name of the show is only one person, Mike Kelta. It's only when there's one name. It's not when you share it with a bunch of people when you're Mike Kelta or Alan DeGeneres and it's your show. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it gets to your head. Ellen went on to reflect on how her outlook on fame has changed following shifting public perceptions amid the controversy surrounding her show, saying, I used to say I don't care what people say about me. Now I realize I said that during the height of my popularity. You totally care what people think. Whenever somebody who is rich and elite tells you that they don't care what other people think, they are, uh, what's the word? Lying to you. Now, by the way, I am a radio geek. I don't know if you guys realize that. And uh, I used to listen to Steve Harvey's morning show when he actually showed up um, on V103 in Chicago every morning. That and Eddie and Jobo and Drex and Jonathan Brandmeier. Chicago radio used to have so many shows. And this intro right here of the Steve Harvey morning show. Oh, yeah. Let's get the party going. What is it? Oh, yeah. Um, what is it? I know. What is it? Oh, we will. Oh, yeah. Greatest theme ever. Steve Harvey, won't you go home with me? How do you not bop your head to this? Now, a lot of the show is scripted, like most morning shows. But this intro, you can listen to this going to the club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this just in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you listen to a morning radio show, and they're talking about someone breaking up. All right, enough of that. I got to tell you guys something real quick. And this is just this is just between me and you, okay? Don't tell anybody I said this. Sometimes people don't like when I do this. Mm -hmm. If you are listening to a radio show, and at 7.30 a.m., they talk to somebody who sounds really excited to talk about their breakup or getting uh, ditched at a first date. This is all alleged. It's true. Those are paid actors. No, it's not true. Because when you go through a breakup, you know what you want to do? You want to talk about it on the radio. <laughs> I've gone on so many first dates and the girls are like, Oh, do you do like War of the Roses on your podcast? And I love being like, it's not real. Mm hmm Oh, but it's real. Eight five six forty nine hoppy. That's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me. 
at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Up next is War of the Roses. I'm just kidding. Now, we have so much to get into. We're going to talk about Carrie Russell, talk about uh, Jaina Duggar, Savannah Chrisley, so pretty much the original elite, and Hilaria Baldwin, the worst of the original elite. Now, I record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you're listening in the UK or if you're listening in America. If you drive on the right side of the car or the left side, I record to entertain you, to make time go by. All right. We will be right back on Happy Hour. Do not touch that radio dial, that smart device. However the hell you're listening to my show. We'll be right back. Hang on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I say this every time, but I want this to be the catchphrase. You can put this on my tomb. If you don't feel like listening, skip forward, but (laughs) that would be cool. No, on my tomb, it's going to say search Hoppy Radio on all podcasting platforms. Uh, Here is Here We Go Again by Soul Du Jour. This is four minutes. This song is a bop. This is a band called Soul Du Jour. They had two hits. Over and over, and here we go again. And whenever I used to play it on 102.5 The Bone, a local talk radio station here in Tampa, when we would play music going to break, everybody thought it was Daft Punk.
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by westchaseprinting.com. When I tell you that they are the best printing company in all the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. When you get that invoice at westchaseprinting.com, tell DJ Tone Tampa it's at DJ Tone Tampa and at West Chase Printing on Instagram and westchaseprinting.com. Tell them that I sent you. You can get business cards, posters, yard signs, whatever the hell you need printed up. They can do that for you. Oh, man. My mic just cut out. Mm-hmm. That's how rock star this show is. This is also being brought to you by fortify.com. F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com. And at checkout, use keyword Hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, to save 20%. Actually, it's keyword R-Y-A-N 20 to save 20%. Any other radio show would have edited that to have the perfect break. We're never perfect a day in our lives. Mm-hmm. All right, here's the deal. We're going to come back on Hoppy Hour and get right into it. There's so much going on in the world. Got Savannah Chrisley saying her mom was sick in jail. Boo-hoo. Got Jana Duggar, who's beautiful. Uh, Engagement rumors. Hilaria Baldwin and much more. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I record this show for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. Mm -hmm. Happy hour. Happy hour. Hoppy now. 856-49 Hoppy. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And now for something completely different. Oh yeah. What time is it? Well, it's right now July 10th, Wednesday at 536 p.m. when I'm recording, but it's time for Hoppy in the morning. Happy hour. Happy hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. At Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. We are syndicated on QuadPod, QODPOD.com. We're syndicated on Ride the Wave Media Podcasting Network, Be On Air Podcast Network.com, and Z Radio Live every Thursday. Let's get back to the content. No! Happy Hot Topic! This next headline represents the rich and elite thinking they're better than us because they kind of are because they have money and that they can get away with anything. She literally said that she got physically sick because she got so hot and the heat index was 105, 110. Yeah. That's what mom's living in. Savannah Chrisley detailing the harsh conditions her mom, Julie, is allegedly facing in prison. Yeah, I love how they use the word allegedly. What if it's really air-conditioned in there? I know it's not. But what if it is and they're saying that for sympathy? Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery. You committed a crime. Now, I know she didn't commit as much of the tax fraud like her husband. Tad Chrisley. But here's the deal. That's how it is. I love when the rich and elite go to prison and they're like, ew, I don't like it in here. It's like, don't commit a crime. Over a year into her sentence, stemming from her and husband Todd's convictions for bank fraud and tax evasion. It is so beyond inhumane that Mm. you cannot even make it up. Obviously, I hope to have them home, you know, maybe later in the summer. But Savannah's claiming the summer's soaring high temps put her mom in danger. The reality star says on Unlocked, Julie's health risks behind bars now worse than ever. A mom was. But here's the thing. The rich and elite think, oh, because we're getting sick, that we should get special treatment. You committed a crime like everybody else. You go to the bathroom in the morning, and you're going to die someday. I love when the rich and elite, when it comes to the law, think that, oh, we should have special privileges. You're another mortal human being that just has money. Who cares? 
drives me out of this world. A mom was super excited for visitation because she got to be in an air conditioned room. Thank goodness there's air conditioning, but outside the visitation room, there is zero air conditioning. Mm. And the heat index was 105, 110. That's what mom's living in. And it can be 100 degrees inside the building. You know, again, don't commit a crime. <laughs> and she literally said that she got physically sick because she got so hot it's not 200 years ago and people should not have to live in inhumane conditions it's absolutely ridiculous it shouldn't be tolerated this i agree listen i totally agree but don't commit a crime and you won't have to be there i'm just saying this comes after savannah celebrated a court victory for julie last month on instagram didn't necessarily go as we had hoped but we do have a little win the family matriarch leaving prison sooner than expected mm. after judges caught a calculation error for julie's initial sentence in the wake of her 2022 conviction i love how because there was one error the chrisley family's trying to say that like she didn't commit any crimes like get the hell out of here the appeals court could not find any evidence that attributed this $17 million loss amount to my mother. And Listen, I got to be careful how I say this. I'm from the north, so it's not that I don't like people from the south because I'm from, or my mom's side of the family is from North Carolina, so I have some uh, roots from the south. But that southern accent, I can't even do it. I feel like they overdo it to be like, man, Chris Lane knows best. It's hard to do the Southern accent because I'm from Chicago. Can you tell by the way I pronounce my A's? I want to have a salad with my aunt. And for that, I am grateful and I hope and pray that the judge can send her home. Fighting day in and day out with lawyers to get my parents home. So you have these women who are suffering from heat exhaustion and, and they're passing out. Mm. But yet, you know, they're service dogs that have air conditioning it that's not a bad point but then again dogs i'm not the biggest fan of dogs because they don't like me because i know if you're listening you're not viewing me but i'm six foot nine and they don't like me i used to do canvassing jobs where i'd go door to door dropping off flyers and dogs hate me and i also go to cava bars and people um bring their dogs and just every time i'm hanging around dogs are so irritating mm -hmm. eight five six 49 happy that's 856-494-6773 sharon stone says there's so much hate for kevin spacey it's because he's gay no it's because he's a creep who took advantage of people but luckily got away with it not luckily but because he's rich and elite like i say on this show he got away with it ridiculous Sharon Stone's doubling down on her support for Kevin Spacey and suggests most of the backlash against him for his Me Too era scandal is rooted for homophobia. Um, homophobia is huge on this planet, so I'm not denying that there's not homophobia, but he's a creep, and I never trusted him. I remember growing up, even when I watched like the first two seasons of House of Cards, there was something about him that just kind of creeped me out. Mm -hmm. There was something about him that just kind of icked me out. I don't know how to explain it. Just He's not trustworthy. He's not a guy you want to hang out with. Mm -hmm. Whatever. The original lead. So weird. I don't know. It just drives me nuts. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's that weird vibe where it's like, because you have money in your bank account, you think you're better than everybody else. My uncle, who passed away three, four months ago, he was a millionaire. A few times over. And he literally dressed in average clothing. He drove, when it was 2010, he was driving a car from 1999. And then before he died, he was driving a 2012 car. He lived in a one-bedroom apartment that he was grandfathered into in Tahunga, California, the same area that they filmed the first two seasons of Sons of Anarchy. And you would have never known he was a millionaire. He lived low-key. The people that live low-key when they have money are the people that are really rich. The people like the Chrisleys and the Hilaria Baldwins and the NFL players that use money. I'm not saying they're not rich, but they're not saving their money. I remember it took me the longest time to process that my uncle was rich. I didn't realize that until later in life. You know what I'm saying? I didn't realize until later that I was like, oh, that's why he always gives me a huge check for Christmas and my birthday. And I'm not trying to brag, but 
And that's another thing. My uncle died of leukemia, and all I did was pray. And I was like, please don't die. And then he died. And I'm not saying because of my experience that I don't believe in God, but he was the most caring, selfless human being I've ever met. I used to get into a lot of car crashes, and he would always give me a car. He always took care of me. And then he had to die of cancer. And I know that we're all going to die of something, but my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, screw cancer, the most evil thing ever. You have the rich and elite living to 100. I, I, and I'm not trying to project my anger towards my uncle dying on the show, but this is therapy for me. This is me being able to express my feelings. You know what I'm saying? 856 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you're listening on the radio and you want to hear more of my show, it's at RyanHoppyRadio.com and on all major platforms, Apple, Spotify, all of them. Search up Hoppy Radio, H O P P E Radio, and tell your friends. Now, if you're listening on the radio, do not touch that dial. Some great programming is coming up. But if you're listening to my podcast, we are going to talk about Carrie Russell next, talk about Jaina Duggar, talk about Hilaria Baldwin, and um, the proper etiquette for our first date, and uh, Wander Franco, the baseball player that's a pedophile, and much more. So here's the deal. This is the music when it's time to go to break. It's from The Ropers. The Opie and Anthony show made fun of it 10 years ago. And when I did overnights in Chicago, I used to play it. Anyway, again, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. We record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the United Kingdom and you drive on the right side of your car or if you live in the u.s and we're screwed with the presidential uh candidates and you drive on the left side of the car if you're listening that's all that matters we will be right back on happy hour after this hang on RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. <laughs> All right. I say this each time, and I will say it until I die. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward. <sighs> Let me see. You can skip forward four and a half minutes, but here is In My Bag with Usher and T.I. Because I'm playing music, A, that's unlicensed, that I can play, that I don't get a copyright strike, because that's no good, because then they delete your show. <laughs> All of my 2019 show is gone. But here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I work really hard to figure out what music you want to listen to. And 50% of you skip over the music, and 50% of you listen. Here is In My Bag with Usher and T.I. Oh, oh. I ain't one to brag, but y'all done made me have to get in my bag. Nothing wrong. Oh, Lord. I'm single oh. and I'm ready to mingle. Yep. Ah. Yeah. There it is. There it go. Fall in love with these women I barely know. Ten stacks on the floor. Time to be up. Tell them I need a hundred more. You at the bar. Pulling it up. You trying to wipe it. I already tore it up. In the P.I. See how I keep it P.I. Left a paper trail. Shout out to my new T.I. Yeah. So wait. Uh, when I say. Oh, okay. All the girls go crazy. So wait. Even your old lady. Wait a minute. It's your old lady. <laughs> Y'all still pushing Benzes. Helicopter chopper take me where my friends is. My taste is so expensive. When I'm up in Vegas, I'm staying where Stephen Wynn is. That's a table full of winners. Don't jack, just knock before you enter. I play my cards right. You see them fall guys. And ain't no fall guy. Ball like a dog ride. Right? And it's simple elementary. Yeah. She said, Pippin, when you mention me. She wanted a guy. 
she got what I want. In Houston, they bop us. Miami, they shout. I can give it to you simply. Yeah. My pimpin' don't come with sympathy. Yeah. She wanted, I got it. I got what she want. Whatever you call it, I'm taking it home. Day is, day go. Glow try to Mr. International. Uh-oh. I'm the coolest. <laughs> The fonts, courtside, hollering out, place to LeBron. <laughs> Ask Shaq what he need, man. Made a call, now we got him up in Cleveland. Yeah, take a flight in the evening, be back in the morning. It must be the cheese, man. And they hate when I brag, but I'm so fly, got permanent jet lag. Yeah, if you wanna just ask, red card, this is not a bus pass. And I'm turning up my mojo, getting mailed every day, no homo. I blind them, they can't see me, doing numbers like ACDC. Industry's in a recession, but I'm still spinning from confessions, yeah. Homie, that's why I ain't stressing. These youngers really need to learn a lesson. Can't doubt me, no. you won't out me. No. Wouldn't even ever stop without me, yeah. I can see behind the smile. Wasn't rocking with me then, and don't be jacking me now. It's a cool elementary. Yeah, just like Pippin when you mention me. She wanted, I got it. She got what I want. In Houston, they bop us. Miami, they shout. I can give it to you simply. Yeah, my Pippin don't come with sympathy. Yeah, she wanted, I got it. I got what she want. Whatever you call it, I'm taking it home. In this ice in my chain to make the whole room light it brightly. Catch a chick's eye like lightning over half a million dollars in diamonds for your excitement. Every other day there's a TI sight and I pass by flying. Higher than gas price, I'm the nicest. My life is like an Uncle Luke in a loop. Group of bras nude in the room while I'm getting chewed. Picture three chicks bumping lollipop remix. Say they can't believe this. Solid like cement. She went down and she came up. Now I her, then we change up, then drop one drop, got everything up, like Clinton, give me, give me to become famous, we can become the best of friends, or remain strangers, pay attention and I show you how to do your thing, girl, oh, hey. and it's simple elementary, yeah, just like Pippin when they mention me, she wanted, I got it, she got what I want, in Houston they bop us, uh -huh. Miami they shout, I can give it to you simply, yeah, my Pippin don't come with sympathy, yeah, She wanted, I got it, I got what she want, whatever you call it. The hour will be right back. Mm -hmm. Let's get the circus music before we do some live reads. Okay. Get it. Got it. Good. Oh, uh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by the best kava and kratom around. I'm actually drinking it right now. It's uh, Mitra 9. Let's get this kava going. Ah, it's so good. Go to mitra-9.com, M-I-T-R-A-9.com, and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, to save 20%. This is also being brought to you by DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's the best Delta 8 and CBD honey around. It comes in like the la -la 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 lollipop form. It comes in Delta 8 and CBD form in a honey stick or a jar of honey. It can get you really high and make you sink into the couch and make you watch cartoons and all that. Here's the deal. At checkout at dzbzhoney.com, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E. We're going to come back and talk about Hilaria Baldwin, Carrie Russell, Jana Duggar, um, some homophobia in St. Pete's, and much more. Right after this.
live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. All right. Let's get back to the content. Oh, happy Hot Topic. I find competitive eating to be absolutely positively repulsive. I don't get it. I think the food could go to feeding the poor in Flint, Michigan, and cities that don't have resources to things. But hey, what do I know? I know a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm a graduate of a radio trade school. <laughs> I'm a real life scholar. I can press buttons. This next headline. Now, Joey Chestnut got banned from the Nathan's Eating Contest mm-hmm. because he was eating a vegan hot dog of a rival brand. This is karma for them kicking him out. Say it isn't so. Could it be that there's a scandal? In the world of Major League Eating, questions are now being asked about just how many hot dogs one contestant really ate during the annual contest at Coney Island. Amber Cagliano reports that some say there is a weasel in the world of wieners. Three, two, one, go! The Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest is now an American 4th of July tradition. Now, just a week after the big event, it's being rocked by scandal. The New York Post's cheeky headline says it all. Buns of steel. The, ar- the, New, U- the New York Post is always good for a hacky headline. The article says this contestant with the red, white, and blue mohawk cheated by adding five hot dogs to his tally that he never ate. <laughs> of course, the guy with the red, white, and blue awful mohawk. That annoying-looking imbecile would, would be the one that would cheat. <laughs> Where he might be in that fourth slot. Patrick Bertoletti won the competition eating 58 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Nick Repulsive. Where he came in fourth after eating 51 hot dogs. But at least two officials associated with the competition reportedly began to suspect Wary of cheating after watching this video. The winner is determined by the number of empty plates in front of each contestant. Each plate holds five hot dogs. The accusation is that Nick Wary swiped an empty plate from the competitor on his right, adding five more hot dogs to his tally. How do you think you're not going to get caught? This is in 1999 where there's not footage everywhere. Maybe because if you're cheating at a national hot dog competition, you're not the brightest bulb. Mm-hmm. In the video, you can see Wary handling the plates, but it's not conclusive that there was some sort of switcheroo. Wary tells Inside Edition, I would never, ever cheat. I don't want to earn a number I didn't get. I apologize if that happened. Whatever. This next headline infuriated me. Oh, happy hot topic. So this is a local headline here in St. Pete. New tonight, a second man accused of vandalizing a Pride Street mural. St. Pete police say they arrested that man right there, Antonio Silvestri, for doing a burnout on the mural that we're talking about at Central Avenue and 25th Street. And this video right here is what we're talking about, receiving this, capturing a white truck here in this video on May 17th, recklessly driving through the intersection that we're talking about here. The tire marks damaging the mural, but the city and volunteers out there restoring it for Pride Month festivities. Listen, this guy probably is the biggest scumbag ever. He's got small energy. He thinks he's better than everybody. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. What is the chance that this man is in the closet? I'm not sure. I see this headline here now. I talked about this seven months ago. I worked in sports radio for about nine months, and I wish them all the best in Tampa Bay. They could use the ratings. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I said seven months ago, I said one incorrect fact about the contract, but there's Wander Franco, who is a local player for the Tampa Bay uh, Rays. 
and he was caught having a relationship with a 14 year old girl in a Dominican Republic and his and the daughter's mom was okay with it. And I said that the lack of sports coverage in Tampa Bay, because the station that airs uh, the Tampa Bay Rays talks about the Rays. I said that they were ass kissing the Rays and protecting them and not talking about it. And that this was Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Detroit, that it would be covered. And I made a video about it. And a lot of my former co-hosts got mad. And um, I am so sorry. But it's just the truth. Tampa Bay Rays shortstop Wander Franco has been formally charged with sexual abuse and sexual exploitation against a minor in the Dominican Republic for a relationship he had with a 14-year-old girl. I've never gotten into the whole pedophile thing, maybe because I'm not a pedophile, but I find teenagers to be so annoying to be around. And then you have this. I don't get it. How sick in the head are you? What are you, Carl Malone? What are you, Josh Giddy? So. That's going on in the news. I don't feel like talking about a pedophile too much. Travis Kelsey, Super Bowl suites were three million. Anything for love. So when he gave Taylor Swift the suite for the Super Bowl, he paid three million. How long until those two break up? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I don't believe they are a real couple. I think it's all fake. I think he cheats on her all the time. WNBA star Cameron Brink back in heels weeks after tearing ACL. I have a crush on this woman. She is so gorgeous. She is so beautiful. But you got to be careful when you're wearing those heels. Hopefully you don't fall down. Also in the news, podcast host sparks fury debate after slamming entitled women who complain about being taken to the Cheesecake Factory on a first date. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I don't even need to read the headline or the article to tell you that if a woman is not cool with Cheesecake Factory, which the prices have gone way up. If that's not good enough for her, that's not someone you want to date. That's somebody that's with you for the clout, that is with you for the attention, and will probably cheat on you and leave you. That is a high-maintenance person. Seriously, if Cheesecake Factory is not good enough, it's not somebody you want to date. I used to have a female co-host on this podcast and she called me out when I said I went on a first date um, to uh, Applebee's. And she was like, why would you take a girl there? And then she got a lot of backlash from people. And I wish her nothing but the best. But the thing is, there's different elitist rankings to girls. And I got to be careful how I say this. But if a girl doesn't want to go to a cheaper place, that means she's high maintenance. Mm-hmm. Hey, maybe you don't agree with me, but I call it like I see it. That's one thing you can always say about happy hour. You can say a lot about me, mm -hmm, but I always call it like I see it. I'm never going to sugarcoat it. I'm never going to hold back. It's almost like I'm here to speak my mind. You know what I'm saying? If you want to listen to more of my show and you're listening on the radio, go to every single major platform that has a podcast and search up Hoppy Radio, H-O-P-P-E Radio. Mm-hmm. And um, for all the info on this award-winning show, go to ryanhoppyradio.com. Coming up next, we're going to talk about Jada Duggar. We're going to talk about Carrie Russell, Hilaria Baldwin, and um, play some audio as well during garbage time. Call me, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. And I really want to hear from you. This show has a ton of listeners, but we don't often get a lot of messages. And I know that's the 1% that sends a message to a podcast. But I truly want to hear from you, even if you hate me. Even if you think I'm the worst thing of all time. Mm -hmm. I love hearing the love and the hate. Because I'm in radio for attention. Because I was about 25% ignored as a kid. Not really. I had a good childhood. You know what I'm saying? All right, we're going to come back on Happy Hour and we're going to keep this party going because that's what we do here. Life is too short to not listen to an entertaining show. And I'm not saying other shows aren't entertaining, but I take pride in what I do here. 856 49 Happy. It's 856 
494-6773. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Hang on. Radio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Mm-hmm. If you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip forward three minutes and 49 seconds. Here is Ray J and Ludacris with Salute. With, oh my goodness. Mike cuts out when I'm introducing a song. That's a sign that I should play Ray J and Ludacris. Celebration. segment has been brought to you by DZ BZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com mm-hmm. When I tell you that that is the best CBD and Delta 8 around, I am a man of my words. This is also being brought to you by Mitra 9 
mitra9.com m-i-t-r-a-9.com and at checkout use keyword hoppy h-o-p-p-e across the world and heard exclusively on every podcasting platform by searching Hoppy Radio. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The Listen to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856-49 Hoppy. 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me. At Radio, And you can always email me. RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Here is the latest with Ariana Grande. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here is the latest. I mean, you see male actors be, you know, sure, people make jokes here and there as well about about everybody who experiences something like this, but it's always after the fact that they're like, oh, wow, how dedicated to his craft. What an amazing transformation. He's a brilliant performer. And then it's like, God forbid I like sneeze like Linda or something, or if I make an intonation that it's just that I am crazy or shall someone check on her? It's the weirdest thing. Ariana Grande is not hiding her frustration after getting backlash for changing her voice. On the July 9th episode of the Shut Up Evan podcast, host Evan Ross Katz asked the Eternal Sunshine singer about criticism she received after fans noticed a sudden change in her voice. Again, if you're talking about the change in your voice and it's bothering you, don't change your voice. During a recent interview. And there is a clip going viral right now from your recent interview on Pop Crushed. And the clip has you modulating between your lower register and your higher register. Mm. Which is such a normal thing that people do. All right. And I mean, like, especially if you have a large range, that's a normal thing anyway. Sorry, go on. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) The Wicked Actress. Whatever. What a brat. A talented brat, that is. Speaking of a brat. Oh, happy hot topic! Alec Baldwin receives family support as his manslaughter trial begins in New Mexico. Uh, the support should be going to the cinematographer that died. The star's wife, Ilaria Baldwin, and brother, Stephen Baldwin, are pictured sitting behind the actor in a Santa Fe courtroom where day one of the Rust shooting trial gets... Un- He's trying to cry in the courtroom. What a fake piece of garbage actor. ...underway. Baldwin is charged with involuntary manslaughter in the 2021 accidental shooting death of Rust cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The actor had been rehearsing a scene when a prop gun he was using went off firing a live round of ammunition, fatally shooting the 42-year-old. He has pleaded not guilty and has maintained his innocence. Telling, Can you imagine if he just was like, hey guys, I'm guilty, send me to jail. <laughs> ABC News in 2021 that he never pulled the trigger. Yeah. I let go of the hammer of the gun, the gun goes off. At the moment. The that was moment. the moment the gun went off, yeah. That was the moment. George Stephanopoulos did a good interview with Biden, but in this one, he was kissing the butt of Alec Baldwin. Oh, going on. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So you know- then who did, Alec? I know this has been talked about for three years, but my goodness, I can't stand him. Never pulled the trigger. No, 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 no. I, no, no, I would no, never no, point no, a gun no, at anyone no. and pull a trigger at them, never. The way he says, no, 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 no. It's yes, 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 yes. 
Both the prosecution and defense delivered their opening statements to the jury, with special prosecutor Erlinda Johnson challenging the actor's claim that he never pulled the trigger, arguing that Baldwin was reckless, violating rules of firearm safety. Mm. The fatal and one of the main problems that afternoon of October 21st was that the defendant didn't do a gun safety check with that inexperienced armorer. Yeah, and he was the one on Twitter that was always ripping into gun owners and Trump. And then look what happened to you, bud. He pointed the gun at another human being, caught the hammer, and pulled that trigger. Yeah. 856 Happy. There's also, there, I just sound like Mike Tyson. There's also this. The trial of Alec Baldwin opened with the prosecutor describing the horrifying moment the famed actor accidentally shot a cinematographer to death. She said the star of the movie Rust was rehearsing this scene. He cocks the hammer, points it straight at Miss Hutchins, and fires that gun, sending that live bullet right into Miss Hutchins' body. Prosecutors also played a chilling video of the frantic efforts to save cinematographer Helena Hutchins' life. Deep breath, deep breath, Helena. After the shooting, the defendant began to claim he didn't pull the trigger. The evidence will show, ladies and gentlemen, that's not possible. He's been dodging this court case for about three years now, and it's crazy seeing him in court. He doesn't look so badass now, does he? She said it was Baldwin's responsibility to do a final safety check and to never point a gun at another person. But his defense lawyer says the real issue is the unsolved mystery of where the fatal live round came from. No one had any idea that this venomous, toxic element had been inserted into this magic they were creating, but it did. There was a moment of high drama when the jury heard a 911 call made by a script supervisor moments after the shooting. She can be heard blaming the tragedy on an assistant director, not on Baldwin. Uh, Bonanza Creek Ranch has had two people accidentally shot on a movie set by a prop gun. That yelled at me at once. He's a major question for Baldwin's defense will be whether he should take the stand and how he will deal with withering cross examination. Yeah, he's an actor that hides behind scripts. If I were him, I would not take the stand. Nomination, considering his reputation for fits of temper. Don't touch me. Hey, get off me. He has a long track record of out-of-control behavior. He yeah. was caught on camera manhandling this photographer and laughing about it. Sociopath. Usually the defendant is advised not to take the stand. It's totally up to this defendant whether or not he will. He's an actor and he wants to share his story. Some court observers believe Baldwin's volatile personality could make taking the stand a serious risk. I would suggest that he not testify because he clearly has anger management issues. Mm -hmm. And unless he is very well coached and perhaps under meds when he testifies, that might be a problem for him. 856-49 Hoppy. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. I see this here. Uh, this is what Jason Tatum said to his coach. They just won the championship with the Celtics. Joe, his coach, was already trying to draw up S for next season. I was like, Joe, F that. We just won a championship. Like, enjoy and relax. Jason Tatum, first of all, does not have an original personality. He copies all the quotes of Kanye West, of Kevin Garnett. The guy is a robot. He's a great basketball player, but he's a robot. Second of all, he worships Kobe Bryant because Kobe Bryant was his mentor. Rest in peace, Kobe. But this guy right here, he always, and I mean he always tries to reenact Kobe pictures, and he took a picture of a text message he sent Kobe. He took a picture of a text message he sent Kobe. And the thing is this, ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, the all-time greats that Jason Tatum tries to be, that he tries to copy, would not have said, hey, enjoy it and relax. That's how you get out of shape in the offseason. He should be grinding, and he should be, you know, in the, in the gym, working out, doing his thing. But this shows, again, I despise the Celtics, so I'm a little biased, but this shows how unoriginal he is, how much of a copycat he is of other people, and he needs to look inside and figure out how to have a personality. It drives me nuts, and all the Celtic fans, if they would have won the championship and um, 
let's say they don't win the championship and they beat a team that beat all these injured teams in the playoffs. The Celtic fans would be crying a foul. But when it's them, you got to respect us. you got to respect us. Your main guy, your 1A to 1B being Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. When Jason Tatum is saying, hey, bro, relax, he doesn't care about winning. He just got $350 million from the Celtics. He's good now. And that's why Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan are so special because they cared. 856-49-HOPPY. By the way, I am recording from the chill room of Pinellas Park, and the greatest bartender of all time, Leah, just came by and gave me my drinks. All right, here's the deal. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. We will talk about Jaina Duggar. We will talk about Kerry Russell. And uh, in garbage time, I will play some audio that's probably not safe for the radio. Here's the deal. If you are listening on the radio, I appreciate it. If you're listening via a podcasting platform after searching Hoppy Radio, I appreciate it. We record for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you're in the UK or if you're in the US. As long as you're listening to Hoppy Hour, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Hang on. <laughs> It's time for Hoppy in the morning. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ryanhoppyradio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, I love saying it. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward. Three minutes and 49 seconds, but here's Droked Out, Droked Out. We're getting Droked Out. We're getting Droked Out, Droked Out, Droked Out. By Sean Master T. Droked Out, Droked Out, Droked Out. Yeah. I, 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 I can't talk Broken from the day to the dark 
fall for square, but my goons on P. It's drinks on you, all eyes on me. And niggas with me drinking dumb. Any mix with Remy Ma. Party going all night. When we kick it, kick it hard. Niggas with they smoke down. They be getting choked down. Mix it with some liquor, nigga. We be getting drunk down. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by Mitra 9. The best Kaba and Kratom around at Mitra-9.com. M-I-T-9. And at checkout, use keyword hoppy. H-O-P-P-E to save 20%. This is also being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at AmirAcademy.com. When I tell you that he is the best around, I'm a man of my words. This is also being brought to you by DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. At checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E. All right, let's get back to the show. What everyone else is afraid to say, Ryan Hoppy will say for you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. This is Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, RyanHoppyRadio at gmail.com. Let's get back to the show. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! I saw this next headline, and I thought it was silly. JoJo Siwa says drinking alcohol on stage is thanks to her grandma. She's, what, 22, 21? She's going to age real quick. The crowd goes absolutely ballistic. JoJo Siwa is sharing behind the scenes details of her recent Pride performances. On July 8th, the Karma singer takes to her podcast, JoJo Siwa Now, to reflect on her Pride concerts and how her grandmother supported her idea to drink on stage. This idea of doing this stemmed from, I was in rehearsals and we were starting a new routine yesterday, tomorrow's today, and my 21st birthday had just passed and I was like, I want to f- take a shot before this. And <gasps> my grandma was like, all right, JoJo, nice, do it. And I was like, all right, let's do it. The Dance Moms alum, who just finished her tour of Pride performances in L.A., New York, Miami, and Chicago, goes on to share that the audience's reaction inspired her to make it a, quote, big thing following Los Angeles Pride at the park last month. How soon until she gets a DUI? The first one that I did it at was L.A. Pride. And at L.A. Pride, I brought out a jug of Tito's. And people were like, whoa, what are you doing? Is it real? Is it fake? And I was like, bitch, it is what it is. It's a Wow, you're really classy, trash bag. Bottle of Tito's. What do you think it is? Now, ah, oh, whatever. Enough of you. This headline's funny, too. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! I find the Duggar family to be repulsive. Is Janet Duggar walking down the aisle soon? The Counting On alum sparked engagement rumors on Monday, July 8th, after she was spotted wearing a ring on her left hand. The 34-year-old shared a series of photos from her fun day in South Carolina on Instagram, but two specific photos got fans' attention. While posing next to her brother, John David Ducker, she was spotted wearing a diamond sparkler on the ring finger on her left hand. In another photo, she subtly showed off the ring again while posing with her sister-in-law, Abby Duggar. I feel like Josh Duggar is the we don't talk about Bruno there. All right, enough of that. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Was there a cutoff yes. age where, like, after you turn 17, you can... You, like, spit on, on that thing? Yeah, it's usually, like, girls who look like they were sexually active. <laughs> Carrie Russell is looking back on the strict rules of the Mickey Mouse Club. The actress reflects on her time as a cast member of the Mickey Mouse Club on the July 9th episode of Jesse Tyler Ferguson's podcast, Dinners on Me. 
During her appearance, she makes a comment about the age cutoff discrepancies between the boys and girls who were part of the iconic Disney show. I mean, when you left, you were one of the old, like, was there a cutoff yes. age where, like, after you turn 17, you can no longer be on it? Yeah, it's usually, like, girls who look like they were sexually active. <laughs> which probably... What a creepy <laughs> laugh. Uh, Buster Rhymes did this. He went off on the crowd that were using their phone. Turn the house lights on. New Orleans, y'all look like y'all tired. You motherfuckers ain't ready. I don't give a fuck how many seats is empty in this bitch. Everybody that's here, get the fuck up. <laughs> Sir and, and, and miss, thank you. First of all, the, uh, the uh, crowd is empty. And second of all, you shouldn't be going off on people that paid to see you, douche. Excuse me, brother. What are you, Nicki Minaj? Don't, don't, don't start with motherfucking me today. Mm. What is it, your time of the month? What is it, your menopause? Fuck going on. What the fuck, uh, what the fuck going on? Hey, yo, fuck them camera phones, too. Let's get back to interacting like humans. All right, man. Put them weird-ass devices down. I ain't from that era. Them shits don't control the soul. Uh, what's the word? Okay, boomer. <laughs> I don't care how fast you're at. You sound like a tool. Fuck your phone. Yeah. Excuse me, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I will point every last one of y'all out until y'all asses is up. What's with the gang sound effects? <laughs> cool, bro. 33 years of doing this shit. I ain't used to niggas sitting down at my show. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. All age groups, get your ass up now. Dude, no one's at your show. <laughs> That's why you can tell no one cares about your show, because no one's there. I see you, beautiful queen. Get up to. Fuck going on. Mm. Everybody up top, too. Get your big head asses up. <laughs> Look, what? the reason why there will be zero tolerance for bullshit energy in here is because this is my first time in New Orleans at the fucking 30th anniversary of the Essence Festival. I wonder if he talks like that all day long. Now you got every, now the next on Happy Hour, you got every girl trying to be the hawk to a girl. Nauseating. Just go on Tinder and shut up. No! Happy Hot Topic! Mm -hmm. This is uh, funny right here. This is interesting. This is uh, some girl trying to be hawk to it. And for some reason, the clip is not playing. And maybe that's better. Oh, I had it on mute. It's, I've been doing a show for two, two hours and 20 minutes, so be nice to me. Here we go. Do you like spitting on that thing? It's got to be super wet, so of course it's got to be fucking... No, do you like... The hawk to us um, spit on that thing was such a genuine response. Now you got every girl trying to be famous. This is my weenie. Pretend this is my weenie. Do you like spitting on it? Who do you spit on it? Oh. Wow, she spit on it. Fathers across the world must be so proud. Oh, that's right. If you're doing that interview on camera, you don't have a dad. Happy hour. Happy hour. Now, before we end this show... I want to play you a radio show that's the reason I'm in radio. Man Cow's Morning Madhouse, who has one of the best, and I mean one of the best intros ever. Mm -hmm. See if you have unread. I got to go through these commercials first. All right. This following segment has been brought to you by DZ BZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. Use keyword hoppy. This is being brought to you by mitra 9com Use keyword hoppy to save 20%. This is brought, being brought to you by fortify.com, F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E.com. At checkout, use keyword Ryan20. Mm -hmm. This is being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. This is being brought to you by westchaseprinting.com. And if you want to listen to my show, go to any podcasting platform and search up Hoppy Radio, H O P P E to save or not to save but to be saved and have good entertainment i have been talking for this is the record 
of the longest show I've ever done. So I should send this to the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest show ever of Happy Hour. Now, we're at two hours and 22 minutes and 22 seconds. So on that note, because that's a lucky number, I think, here is the intro to the show, one of the many reasons I'm in radio. Before I brought up the T-Man with Rob Tepper, here's Man Cow's Morning Madhouse. Why not? <laughs> is now over. <laughs> Happy hour is now over.